Hello folks, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dancefish.com, where we're on a mission to humanely source, maintain, and transport aquarium fish to our customers. Let me show you what we have going on right now. All right, these are the red form of a Pistogramma Hongsloy. I think one of the prettiest little pistos out there, and there's a lot of pretty ones, but I really like these nice red bellies on them. These are from a hobbyist source, so they're hobbyist bred and raised. With the pistos, my recommendation for long-term housing would be some sort of hardscape that divides the tank into about three different distinct zones. So there would be an obvious territory on each end of the tank and then an obvious territory in the middle. And for those that want to breed, um, if you get two pairs or something like that, uh, you might need to get a group, but once they pair off, we have two pairs in that tank. Put spawning caves and such on each end of the aquarium, e in each of those uh, spaces that are a little far apart. So what you'll end up with is a territory for spawning on one side, a territory for spawning on the other side, and then this kind of no man's land in between, this kind of neutral territory in between. That tends to work really well with a lot of Apisto species. The pairs will bond, they will defend their territories, but you have a, a buffer zone in between, so nobody gets killed. So that's the idea. How do you get them to pair bond and be able to compete without, uh, you know, demolishing each other? Now, you don't have to do it that way. There's lots of ways to breed a pistols, but I think that's the way that you can ensure safety and have a good probability of success because each pair will bond against the other pair. And that tighter pair bond helps you have more success spawning and raising the babies. Anyway, Pistol Grandma Hongsloy, the red version, looking fantastic. All right, here we have a whole bunch of platinum parrots. I like these. There's a lot of parrot cichlids that I don't bring in because they have those deformed mouths that don't even shut. They can't even operate like a mouth. And I just, I don't know, I feel like that's a genetic mutation that uh, if humans have made you in such a way that your mouth doesn't even operate, it's like, yeah, that's not something I want to bring in very often. So I don't, I don't bring parrot fish in much, but these are the platinum parrots. And what I like about these is they're cute as a button. They're the cute little round, you know, balloony type fish that we all love in a parrot fish, but they work properly. Like their mouths function. They can act and swim and behave like a normal fish, which is what I look for in a species. So I tend to avoid varieties that I'm like, man, we've bred those so far into the into a direction against nature that they can't even act like a fish anymore. I try to avoid that, but I don't think these are there. I think these are still within what I would say good quality of life type fish. So brought them in because I think parrotfish are excellent pets. They're true wet pet. They don't get too massive. So they're manageable for a lot of people. They're hardy. They're, they're kind of a happy, neat little fish. So, well, little, they're going to get four inches or bigger, but um, you know, there are a lot of amazing cichlids in this world, but one group that I never get tired of is pelvic acromis. Look at this one. All right, these little gems here are pelvic acromis taniatus, the Nigerian red form of that fish. These are youngsters. I would say they're oh, around an inch and a half, maybe a little bit bigger on the bigger ones. Just starting to get a little bit of color. You can see that little guy there with his bright red face. They get these thick yellow lips, and they're similar to Pelvic Acromus pulcher and other species like that, but, but there are distinctions, such as the tail is more rounded, the lips are thicker, and they have a, a different color pattern when they, uh, when they color out. But behavior-wise, they're still great. They're a, a peaceful, small, dwarf, little West African cichlid. Hardy, not difficult to take care of, do well in a wide array of water parameters. And just delightful little uh, alternative to your more common Crabensis, I would say. We have been getting some amazing live bearers in, if I do say so myself. Here's a few that I think are spectacular, including a wild type Molly. All right, if you've been in the aquarium fish hobby for any length of time at all, you'll be able to take one look at these sword tails and know they're kind of special. These are cauliflower red wag sword tails. Nice quality, good consistent strain, beautiful finage. I think these are amazing. Very proud to have these. Now we only have females right now, but even the females are awesome with all their color. They just look fantastic. All right, here's a little fish that I'm just ecstatic about. These are the solid yellow high fin platys. Look how nice this strain is. Man, it's, it's been so awesome to find a supplier that does lie bears nicely. Um, just the consistency on them, the nice tall fin, the health 
Like these came in awesome and they've stayed awesome the whole time. We haven't had any issues with this batch. It's been a beautiful little batch. So really thrilled with these guys. Glad to have them, glad to share them with you. Solid yellow hyphen platies. I know platies after a while in this hobby can get a little ho-hum, but then you see something like this and it's like, you know what? That is a little special. That is just a, in my opinion anyway, just a, a cut above what I would normally see. So really proud of these. They're eating, they're doing well. They're, I checked the health on them very carefully for the last couple weeks. They're now out of quarantine and good to go. Okay, don't blink. These guys are tiny, but I'm very excited to have them. So excited about these little miniature fish. These are tiger teddies. I've been wanting these for a long, long time. Finally got a nice group in from a hobbyist breeder and they're rock solid. We haven't had any issues with these. They've been doing fantastic. Now they're very small. They're a colorful live bear. They're, they're neat. They have this bright and orange reddish patch kind of mid body. Um, this surrounds like this ocular spot, like a, di a, a dark eye spot. Really fantastic little live bear. Have a reputation for being somewhat difficult, but this batch has been rock solid for us, and I think they would be for you as well. They remind me basically of a gambusia if it was really colorful and cool. So, a really neat mosquito fish, basically. We haven't bred them yet. Um, they're just getting old enough to maybe start breeding soon, but I, I'm very excited about these guys. Tiger Teddy's been, I've seen them in the flesh once before, only once before. It watercolors, uh, a great pet store in the Grand Rapids area, shout out to watercolors, in their kind of secret basement quarantine area. They had a group of them and they were, they were gorgeous. I've wanted them ever since. Finally found a nice hardy group and they're just about through the end of quarantine and still no problems, no nothing. So really happy with these guys. All right, this next fish is a very, very interesting wild type live bear. This is Pocilia gilli. It's a species of wild molly, similar in some aspects, I would say, to a Liberty molly, but that's Pocilia salvatoris. This is a different species altogether. Nice, nice red on the fins of the males. Just a beautiful, really unique fish. This is my first time having them, and I was a little nervous to get them because they're kind of expensive, but we haven't had a single problem. No losses, no issues. They eat everything eagerly. The females are bulking up. I think they're gonna drop fry for us. Like just a nice little colony of them. So if you like wild type live bears and want a neat wild molly, here they are, Pocilia gilli. Looking good, doing good, and absolutely thriving for us. Okay, this is one of the most famous fish known to science. These are archer fish. If you've ever watched a nature documentary, you've probably seen at some point Footage of these guys shooting insects off of leaves and branches that are outside of the water, like archers. They shoot a jet of water out, they knock the insect into the, into the lake or the mangrove swamp or, or whatever they're in, the estuary, and uh, then they can eat the insects. So it's a really, really neat adaptation. Most of the ones you're seeing in those nature documentaries are from mangrove swamps, like estuary type salt water environments. The nice thing about this species, this is the Burmese clouded archer fish, is A, it doesn't get quite as big as some of those more saltwater species, and B, it lives in fully fresh water its entire life. This is a freshwater species. You don't have to worry about salinity. You don't have to mix salt and do all that. You can keep them with plants. So I really like this one. The scientific name is Toxotus, Toxotus blythei. And they are one of my favorite fish of all time. I've been keeping these uh, Burmese clouded freshwater archer fish for many years now, and I've fallen in love with them. I think they're fantastic. And they're sharing this aquarium with an amazing tetra. This is the four spot tetra. It's a type of splash tetra, even though it doesn't do the splashing. It's very closely related to your Copella species, to those splash tetras. These guys are beautiful. They get about oh, right, maybe around three inches full, full, full grown, very tip of the nose to tip of the tail. And I just think the pattern and the body shape and all that is really neat. I think this is one of the coolest Tetras out there. They're not doing it now, but when they color in, and they do color up frequently, they're, they're not as colored up now as they often are. When they feel like spawning or feeling territorial or whatever, they get a lot of red on them. There's a little red on them now, but it gets much, much more intense. Really super neat Tetra. So this is one of my favorite tanks. 
All right, here's another cute little goby we've been enjoying here at Dan's Fish. Almost all gobies are cute, I would say. Big old sleeper gobies, maybe not so much, but the rest of them, yeah, pretty much. These are Reddy gobius. This is a genus you don't see very much. The, the species name is Leveri or Leveri. Reddy gobius Leveri is what I'm going to call them. Another one that has proven to be just peaceful, delightful, ton of fun. Absolutely enjoying these guys as well. No issues. They've been hardy, like just a solid batch. One thing I like about these is their dorsal fin. They, they wave it up there and they've got that black dot on there that they use in displays. They kind of flare that thing and, and pulse it. And uh, uh, how do you describe it? Like, like an insect display pulsing its wing spots is kind of how I would describe it. Something about this species I like, similar to the sharp tail goby, is they both are peaceful. No one's banged up, no one's beat up. There's a hierarchy and, and there's displaying and there's sparring, but they don't seem to hate each other like some gobies do. So that's kind of nice. All right, so we all know and love the celestial pearl Danio. This is another Celexicthes species. That's the genus of both of these species. This is the Emerald Dwarf Rasbora, or sometimes they call it Emerald Dwarf Danio, I think. Um, anyway, this is uh, very similar in body shape and temperament and behavior. They're peaceful little nanofish, just like the celestial pearl Danio. But these guys get an emerald blue with banding down the body. Very nice little fish. So nice blue fish with some uh, kind of yellow bands, vertical bands up and down the body, especially as they color in and mature. So if you like social pearl Daniels and want to try a different flavor of them, then uh, their emerald dwarf rasbor is not a bad way to go. Well, it really wouldn't be a complete video with look without looking at some quarry doors, right? So uh, check these quarries out. These are veil-tailed or long-finned, depending on, on what you want to call them, pandacories. All the delightfulness of a normal pandacory, but with some fancy tails. So if you like pandacories, but want something just, you know, dressed up like it's on its way to the prom, then here's one for you. Now I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. Corridors do best in groups. And some people think a group is six, and it is. Six or eight is a group, and that's fine. But if you get a couple dozen, if you get 20, 30 of them, you'll see a whole different range of behavior. They'll be out and about and bold. You'll see some neat clowning around, some social dynamics. It's just a whole different fish in a larger group. So I totally understand not everyone can do that. I get that. But my recommendation for the best experience with quarries or many other small social fish would be get the biggest group possible. It's just a world of difference. All right, these beautiful little masked quarries with the orange uh, blotch right behind the eye on the upper part of their body are Corydoras. Well, could be a Dolphoi, could be Duplicaris. We're not quite sure which one it is. Um, we did take a look at their pectoral fins. We did not see any serrations. We put them in a clear container and shined a light up from underneath and did not see anything. But we don't have like a jeweler's lens or anything like that here where we could see, take a real close look. And those serrations are tiny, so we could have just missed them. So they were sold to us as, as a, a dolphoy, and we did not see any serrations. But we just might not have seen them with our naked eyes because they are very, very small. If you just want a really pretty fish for your aquarium, that's not going to matter. They each are as pretty and as nice and peaceful and awesome as the, the other. So both those species are amazing. Now, we're going to keep looking into it. And if we do end up getting some magnified way to see those serrations and are confident that they're actually smooth and therefore a dolphoy, we will update the listing with that information. We just want to be upfront and honest. We, we don't want to... There are times when we list a fish under the wrong name for sure because we don't know any different. Uh, but this is a case where we understand that there's a risk of listing a Dolphoy as Duplicarius. So we just want to, you know, mention that up front just to be transparent about that. But no matter what they are, they are one of the prettiest quarries out there. I love that white body color and how it contrasts with the black mask and skunk stripe. And then they get a bright orange blotch up there too on the dorsal surface right behind the eye. And that gets brighter and brighter with age. So really beautiful quarry, easy to keep and uh, pleasant to look at. So these are South American bumblebee catfish. They're a dwarf catfish. They're very active. They love their food and they're pretty. Bumblebee's an apt name for them. Nice bright yellow on a dark brown contrasting banding pattern. Now, 
These like to be in groups, but they don't have to be. I think these will be fine solitary as well. And I like them in groups though, just because I like to watch what we're watching now. I love the rugby. I love the uh, <laughs> trying to get the pellet. The, the feeding activity is pretty cool. Anyway, really neat fish, doesn't get too big. In our experience, these guys are, are tough as nails, a very hardy fish for your aquarium. Now, I wouldn't keep them with anything too tiny because they do have big mouths for their size, but they're not gonna be aggressive and bother any fish that they can't you know, eat. So that's not a concern. Unless you're keeping the bitty fish, then it is is a concern. Well, thanks for coming along on this tour. Please keep your arms and legs in the vehicle until it comes to a complete stop, which will happen in four, three, two. Hey everyone, it's Dan. If you want to learn more about Aquarium Fish, we do a live stream every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Dan's Fish YouTube channel. If you're in the market for Aquarium Fish, check us out at dancefish.com. We ship to the U.S. and parts of Canada. And if you want something fishy to wear, we've got merch. Till next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.